All right, we're going to start with this uh, click and hammer. And I'll show you the name of it here. Size 8. It's about the normal size 12 for this kind of type style hook. But I like this bend in this hook. It really makes a nice yellow stone. And uh, welcome to day 4, Thursday, Thursday. Might want to have a grab a beer before you start this one. You might want one or two. All right, here we go. We're going to have use a white thread, and we're going to start it right behind the eye of the hook, and we're going to tie in some goose by it. Now you can tie in these goose by it, and you want to make sure they have an art, like a bend to them. You want to make sure that they bend out and not in. So they bend away from the eye of the hook, not towards the eye of the hook. You want to cut these goose by, uh, by its off short, wrap them up, cover them all up with thread. And then head cement this, whip finish it, then head cement it, and then you're going to put your bead on. Now you want to go all the way back to, I go way back into the bend, and then I'm going to tie on, now you're going to make these bites longer. I usually do them half the distance between where my thread is and that bead is, and I tie them in. And you want to make sure they're, they are bent out too, so they don't point, come together, they point away from each other. Now, this, this fly takes a little bit, but this is my favorite fly. This is the fly I don't go to the creek with. This is my deadly, this is the one that's going to catch a lot of people that hire us as guides fish. It's deadly in the beginning of the season, all the way up to the end. Um, I, now you tie in a black wire. Now you're going to look at me or tell me, dude, that's not black wire, that's rubber. Yeah, yeah, that's rubber because I couldn't find my black wire or I didn't buy any when I was at the blue herring last time. So I'm going to use rubber, but trust me, wire is what you want. <laughs> Please don't use rubber. It was a pain in the butt to, to wrap, but anyway, use black wire. Now I'm going to use this synthetic yellow stone dubbing. Um, I got some opossum one, opossum one time. That works pretty good. But any yellow stone dubbing.
now you're gonna rib this with the wire and right here you're gonna see why wire is better you can get wraps more even this rubber is just a pain in the butt but wrap your you know use it to as a ribbing Yeah, this rubber actually broke in the first video, and I just started all over, so, yeah, please, just use wire. Now we're gonna use this nymph skin, about a quarter inch wide, peel the paper off, tie it in shiny side down. <clears throat> now we're gonna tie in these lively legs. The good thing about using that rubber as a rib is you would just tie rub these rubber in in the place of these legs so a front set middle set and a back set front set shorter so on so on but you're gonna see how much easier it is to tie these rubber legs in than tying all them figure eight and all them rubber okay you're gonna tie the front set in as close as you can to the bead tie to this all the way from the front set to the back set and then you can go behind the second set of legs, tie to the third set, and then just do a couple thread wraps behind the third set. Then you're gonna pick up the tab in the front and cut it off. And you're not gonna cut off the back legs like you did in the mayflies. You're gonna leave it on. This is a stonefly. You want three sets of legs. And just tie off, tie off the back tab. Okay, for the thorax area or the gill plate, we're gonna mix this yellow UV with the white UV and get a very light that represents the gill plate on these stone flies up by the thorax area it's lighter okay so you're going to wrap some dubbing just a little bit right behind the back set of legs then you're going to take the nymph skin bend it over and tie it in right behind the back set of legs then you can take your thread up right up to the second set of legs. Then bend the nymph skin back. <coughs> excuse me. Then bend the nymph skin back on itself and tie it down. And this is going to make your, your, your wing case step. It looks really cool. If you're tying this with me, you'll know. And if you're going to do them later, trust me, it really looks cool. This fly is really deadly. It looks so much like the real fly. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to wrap more dubbing around, bend the wing case over, or the nymph skin over again, tie it down behind the, for the second set, all the way up to the first set of legs, bend it back on itself again, and tie from the first set of legs back to the second set of legs, dub it, bend it over, tie it, cut it off, right at the bead, or tie it down right behind the bead, bend it back and cut it off. And this really looks cool. Wait till you got these in your man. He's really impressed the fly fishermen and they catch a ton of fish. Really cool fly.
like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time all right, if you've been tying this with me, B, look at that fly. It is so pretty. They look exactly like the bug when they're... I picked them up and put them in my hand. They look so much alike, and they are so deadly. Make sure you tie these up. I know they're a long process and not a quick fly to tie, but they are so deadly. I won't go all the creek without them. So, I'll see you guys tomorrow at 5. Get these all these flies in your box so you're ready. Keep your lines wet. Oh, make sure you check out these other videos above me. Keep your lines wet out of the trees and only give them fish a sore lip.